everybody. Thanks for having me back. Uh, looking forward to presenting some um, some of the features that we we all use a lot, and hopefully going to be able to come up with um, some little spins and polishes that um, people will find useful. I did, by the way, I did find the chat window, so I have that open. I'll, I'll I'm going to look at it from time to time. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, feel free to interrupt me in line uh, with any questions and comments uh, because my goal for this presentation, uh, one of my goals is to have it be rather interactive. Um, some of the stuff I'm going to show, I think is 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 pretty pretty good. Some of the stuff I'm going to show is actually like I'm not 100 percent sure if if the way I'm doing it is the best. And uh, since we have an esteemed group here, uh, you know, maybe I'll learn some things. Uh, or get some opinions or both. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to cover a couple topics. I'm going to jump around. I'm not working off a script, I'm kind of informal. Um, and I, I jump around by nature. Um, anyway, a couple features. I'm going to start off with a, a text editor that I've been using for myself. Uh, been very happy. <laughs> you know, it's kind of nice when you're both the developer and the customer. It's sometimes easier to make yourself happy then make a customer happy. Um, so a lot of, uh, here, here's sort of an overall concept. Um, one of the things that we try to do with the FileMaker platform, you know, so the FileMaker platform gives us um, features, I guess, or, you know, they give us functions, uh, script steps, script triggers, layout objects, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? And I think the way I look at it is my job our job as developers is to take what we're given and then combine those um, building blocks, if you will, uh, to create what I'm going to call features um, that are useful. And uh, digging into that, drilling into that, I would say uh, some of the features that we try and come up with or actually do come up with uh, fall into different categories. There's the one-offs you know, customer says, I need this, and it's really maybe super customized to their business. And other things that go into a system are gener not generic, but um, generalized. Like this could be really useful everywhere. And one of them is a, a text editor. I mean, I wouldn't say every single system should have a text editor. I would say that um, there's a bunch of them that would benefit. And I, I'm gonna try and make that case actually, like, based on all the things that FileMaker platform gives us, published by Claris, by the way, is, um, you know, if you use everything that's there, you, you're more likely to find something that when you deliver it to a customer, they'd be like, wow, this is awesome. It does so much and so well. Uh, the other thing I'll get to later, just a peek ahead around the corner, is a list view of all things. Very basic, obviously. And I've got a bunch of features that exist on uh, many of the list views that we deploy. So I'll get to that. That all said, I'm going to start with the text editor. Uh, now, so for any given feature that we're going to deploy a lot, we're going to make an effort. Um, the more times we're expecting to deploy it, the more effort we're going to put into it. That's sort of a simple return on effort calculation. And um, we have a little bit of a process uh, I think of it as a four-step process. Step one is come up with a feature. Some of them are obvious. Maybe some of them are like, hey, you know, I never thought of that before, but it's useful. Uh, so come up with a feature. Second is interface. Um, now, disclaimer on interface. Everybody does the interface different. That's okay. Um, this is, you know, not an interface presentation. Um, other people do those. Uh, you know, whatever I present with whatever interface, I'm pretty sure that there's uh, a lot of people who are going to do it differently and uh, very often better. Um, so I'd look past that and say, like, you know, just take what you want from this presentation and, you know, ignore anything. Uh, the way I write the code, another disclaimer is everybody writes their code a little bit differently. So I, I tend to write very uh, verbose. Is that right? Very, very readable. Um, and that's one way, and maybe someone's going to write their code a little with fewer lines, maybe that'll be faster. Um, I tend to think that FileMaker is quite fast, and I lean towards readability, just based on the, the customers we work with. Uh, I want them to feel 
that they can read the code that they've got. I think it makes them happier with the platform. Um, and well, and also I, I like readable code for myself. Uh, all right, so what's the third step? Oh, so we come up with a user interface and then I guess I already named it, it's the code. Like, okay, if we have this interface, what would the code to support that interface look like? And the interface and the code, they're kind of, you know, one affects the other, but I think of it as two and three. It's kind of almost the same process. And then after that, uh, the next step is, you know, how are we going to efficiently get this feature into a system? And that basically boils down to, um, you know, what are we going to paste first? You know, the fields, the custom functions, the subscripts, and then the scripts, you know, and that's out there. Uh, the sequence with which you get code into a system, you know, hopefully fast um, and efficiently so that you get a nice return on investment and keep customers happy. Uh, so they come back for more. It's a win-win. So, uh, and then before all this, of course, you need an infographic. Uh, by the way, not always. I actually have two features that I'm showing and one infographic, so that proves the point. You don't always need an infographic, but sometimes you do. And um, so this is um, this is a feature I figured I'm going to do a lot of text editor. So let me let me start by exploring what the Claris FileMaker platform offers, and let me let just lay it out on a single piece of paper, um, or maybe a few sheets, and then let me think a little bit about what I'm going to, what kind of code I'm going to write, what kind of interface I'm going to build before I do it. You know, it's what, um, what is it, measure twice, cut once, something like that, or hours of, um, there's an expression, hours of coding, or days of coding can say you hours of planning. So let's, let's just walk through this. Um, so FileMaker lets you format text. Uh, it's got these functions called text formatting. Uh, I think we might see them on the next page. Uh, there's 10 of them all together. Two for color, add, remove. Two for font, face, add, remove. Uh, two for size, add, remove. Uh, two for si uh, style, add, remove. And then there's um, the sledgehammer, remove all. And then there's the RGB. So there's 10 of them all together. All right, good to know. Now, um, all right, we got to work with those. That's good. Uh, we've got these things that don't format text. They rather change text, upper, proper, and lower. I find those useful. You know, scraping something from the web comes in upper. I'm on it upper, lower, or otherwise known as proper, I guess is the right word, or maybe lowercase. So I could, I could use those because I really want to kind of like build a feature that utilizes all of the platform. Um, Potentially, I might not want to go overboard, but you know, I just I don't want to leave anything on the table or on the court if you play sports. Uh, so things you could do. Uh, I can insert text. <clears throat> Hold on. Oh no, where's my beverage? Uh, <clears throat> the um, uh, let's see. I can insert text. I can uh, wrap text, and uh, that's really useful if you're doing an HTML editor, which you'll see shortly and you can transform text. Um, so why do I care? You know, I care because I've got use cases. Um, what does that include? Um, oh, I can make letters that are more of a visual. Um, and, you know, paper still exists. Uh, at least I send letters from time to time. And uh, forms, actually, printed forms to go onto the factory floor, for example. Uh, HTML emails. A um, little shout out so I don't forget it. I'll mention it now. I, I decided I, this was too much to demonstrate, but there is a method that hits my sweet spot. By the way, there are a lot of ways to send email from FileMaker, and they're all good. SMTP, insert from URL for the HTML emails, uh, you know, correct, uh, direct to your client. One of the ones that I found recently, there's some Apple scrolled up, Apple script code out there which is um, lets you send HTML emails into Apple Mail and have them open and you can personalize them. Anyway, I just wanted to shout that out. And if someone wants to ask on community about that, I'll drop the link. Uh, anyway, that's one of my favorite features, maybe not everybody's. So that's a little intro. <clears throat> this, is, um, this is actually an early prototype of a button bar. You know, like I say, people could do it different. This is a fun file maker fact. And uh, if you haven't already watched it, if you're listening to this and they haven't watched the presentation that we all did here, 
about fun FileMaker facts a couple of years back, I would uh, I would say, hey, watch it. This was actually a fun FileMaker fact. You know, once again, touching on text formatting, um, which is a subset of this. So uh, I just had that. I figured this is germane, relevant to what we're doing here. Now, here's some more analytical work. Um, and this may, by the way, disclaimer, may or may not be correct. I looked at the, uh, let's see, style features. These are, we talked about the four things, color, font, size, and style. Here's style. Um, there's uh, drill down, right? There's so many different ways you can style things. You can do, here's the style, plain, bold, italic. And I broke them down based on compatibility. Whilst it's true that you can condense or extend or small cap, you can, do, as far as I know, you can do it on Mac and Windows, but not iOS. So like, you know, warning, warning. Um, and I actually broke my scripts down based on uh, compatibility. Uh, and we'll get to that in a second. But all right, so I did enough analytical work to say like, hey, I'm gonna write some code. Actually, maybe I did a little bit more analytical work. Let's just see what's over here. Um, so this is actually a little bit of, and this is, I'm glad it's, you guys are recording, it's going up on the screen. This is the 10 functions broken down a little bit. This is a repetition of what was on the other page. This is repetition of what was on the other page. Uh, this is a little bit interesting. I'll, I'll show you a bigger version of this. This was my first infographic when I went to a DevCon, FileMaker DevCon, <laughs> now known as Claris Engage. Um, soon to be, you know, we'll be back one day. The uh, first infographic was pretty easy to do. I used a FileMaker database to produce a document. Uh, you know what, I'll jump ahead. Uh, I did this just today. This was way back when uh, 11, I guess I did this when 11 was the DEF CON. And um, I actually like this color palette um, just because of its simplicity. And these hexadecimal codes are easier to type in because they're all of the type where you can get away in FileMaker, not get away, but you can uh, minimize your keystrokes by typing three characters. And then that's the hex, and that's the matching RGB, and that's a, a color name produced by yours truly, and that's a little bit of a color swatch. Pretty simple document. Uh, I'm pretty sure we all work with colors, and I find it useful. Actually, I, I really am a big fan of colors. Um, big fan. And this is the more recent color palette, and you can see the hex is a little bit different. And uh, anyway, so that's that. Getting back, we're going to see some code soon. We're still preparing our analytical work. Oh, and then it's like, hey, what do I want my button bar to look like? It's like, well, what does FileMaker's button bar look like at the time? Probably the same. And then just looking at, like, this is how Slack does it. You know, I'm just kind of like, I don't want to be too variant from what other people are doing. I'd like to leverage people's understanding based on existing. Uh, so that's UI. And, um, you know, how other people do it. I've probably still got it wrong. The, um, this is a custom function that I wrote, very brute force, uh, by the way, using the tilde for the let variables. Um, and this is, what does his name say? Hex to RGB dot result. Um, I'll, sh I'll show you when we get to there. I wanted to be able, well, I'll, I'll wait for the code. And I guess we'll go over and look at some code. Uh, let's see, that means I gotta go over to FileMaker. And I'm, I'm doing both Omnigraphal and um, so I'm, I'm demonstrating actually off my secondary machine, uh, non-primary machine. Okay, so I am going to, I got these little things, <clears throat> by the way, experimental. So I'm gonna hide my little wizard. I got a wizard. I'm not sure it's a good idea. That's one thing it's like, I wanna ask people, hey, what do you think of this wizard? So let's start with something simple. Uh, let's overview. All right, so we had the overview document about what you can do with FileMaker platform. And so let's see, you know, what we thought about doing, we're actually doing. So we've got color. Uh, and actually, let's do it. Oh, I'm going to take off the little spotlight. Um, maybe I'll hit it. From, so I can make my color red, green, blue, purple. You know, I'm pretty happy with that gray, or I could take my colors off all together. By the way, I can also, one of the things that's nice about this, uh, by the way, other people have, you know, done things like this. Um, I think Ray, last name Culligan, 
um, Found Maker Bible did something. Uh, I, a, lot, a lot of ways. I haven't looked at everyone's code, but I try and look at a bunch. One thing that's nice is that whatever I'm selecting, uh, it's it's selected afterwards, so I can hit, uh, you know, this in bold. And by the way, this removes everything. This is the slide chimer I mentioned earlier. Um, so, okay, let's look at this color thing because it ties into what I was saying a moment ago. Um, so, uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's look at this. Uh, it is a button. Um, by the way, not a button bar. Buttons are still good. Let's not pick on buttons. The uh, very simple, because all I need is an R, 15% lighter than a button bar. Uh, and I am passing it a hexadecimal code. Okay, so why would I do that? Because, and this is, you know, a little bit, I don't know, not a bad idea. So, oh, that's, <laughs> by the way, that's the fill, which is not to be confused with the text. So that says A-A-O-O, -O, and that's actually zero, A-A-0-0-0-0. -zero 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 -zero. Uh, so that is the hexadecimal, and if you're a web developer, you might even know these things um, by heart. I sure don't. Oh, wow. That seems weird. Uh, text. Okay. Let me just tell you the concept because I don't want to get stuck. That the concept is that the hex that I'm using to produce the text, 008800, should be identical. At least that one is. I don't know what's up with that one. Uh, there's a reason. Oh, there's a reason. It's just out of sync. All right, so just forget the red. The so red is for wrong stance, phonetically at least. So G. Okay, so let's use this one. Um, I am telling it, I'm passing it 008800. Okay, so that's a hex. And then I'm formatting it to hex. So the text of the button is matched. So if I was to duplicate, make another color, uh, anyway, I was just having fun with um, hex to RGB transformation. Um, it's not going to save the world, but I thought that was fun. So let's look at the script. Um, now, uh, once again, everybody writes scripts differently. Uh, let's look at this one. Let, uh, let's click on the, I'm mad at the red button now. Okay, so here is the function uh, script name, text color underscore btn underscore p. By the way, if, Pretty sure everyone's figured out that BTN stands for this is a script called by a button and underscore P means it is a script that is called with a parameter. Uh, and here is, is the script. Um, now, one of my goals with the script text color, well, actually I had the goal to build like a suite for text formatting and break them up on functional levels and if possible, keep them to one page. And this is obviously one page, um, especially if you're on a big monitor and uh, even on a medium sized monitor. Uh, and I also wanted to write things incredibly readable and also if possible, write things in a way where I could use the same code patterns in each of the different scripts. And we'll see, this one's this, in some ways the simplest, uh, the style is a little bit more complicated. We'll get to that in a moment. This is relatively simple. And uh, like I said, just one way to do it, other ways to do it. Uh, obviously it works, that's good. So um, param, that's what I call param. I'm gonna go line by line. This one, I took the custom function and I embedded it in the script that gives me code portability. Uh, by the way, this is posted on Brian Dunning under my name. And it's, well, we saw it in the screen earlier. So you can find the code there, copy it. Uh, all right, now I'm writing, I, I always call it like a brute force, um, very line by line. It is possible rather than writing it, this, uh, let me just pick something. I think you could do all five of these lines in one single line. Once again, I tend to write it this way because A, it's super readable, B, not just for me, but someone I hand it off to. You know, it's the thought that FileMaker is an accessible platform. Perhaps you could even call it low code. I would call it a rapid application development, but you could call it a low code rapid application development environment. Call it what you want. Great platform. All right, here we go. File contents. So anyway, very uh, original variable names. They could be shorter. 
if you wanted to make a code less readable. And I did a dot syntax here because Ruby does dot syntax and I like, I like a dot syntax for the other languages that um, exist that I read. Um, so selection start. So by the way, there's this concept of a selection. And by the way, on the, um, obviously on the left, uh, the, my selection is the word quick. Um, so selection, and then this is selection, which I've extracted. And then I have this other thing, selection formatted. Um, and, you know, I'm just writing different. And then for all of these scripts, I did them the same way. Uh, I'm using field contents. And I did this thought is like, what's my field contents before my selection? I use the word before, um, meaning to the left of, I guess. Uh, and what's my field contents after? And then what would be my field contents after I have formatted um, the, which I, by the way, done here with the text color. So I've got my before, my after, you know, it's like, what did I have before? What did I have after? What's in the middle? And then I'm going to put them together. And apparently here, uh, if his empty parameter set variable formatted, um, I'm not even sure what that does. I'd have to think, I wrote these a while ago. Uh, let's pretend I wrote it eight years ago. So who knows, it's been working for eight years. Uh, all right, then I'm gonna set field. Here's something worth noting. What field am I setting? Why I have no field specified. Well, it's actually really cool because if I do not specify a field, then it will take action on the field that I am in. In other words, where the cursor is, which gives me the ability to use a single button bar uh, or single collection of buttons uh, to format multiple fields. And um, that's actually obviously useful. And then set selection. Uh, and once again, if I do not specify the field, it will know. And if I do not specify the uh, selection, um, or maybe I'm specifying the selection. Hold on, let me take it back. Like I said, yeah, no, I guess you have to do that. Wrote it a while ago, eight years, but anyway, it works. Um, and um, so that is colors. By the way, any question on colors? <laughs> Probably not. All right, so then we're going to move right on to bold. Okay, so here's bold. So bold toggles. Um, let's take a quick look at that. Uh, so textile compatible. I broke the textiles into compatible one, compatible two. And I believe the reason I did that, if I recall, was on a 30 inch monitor, um, it made two one page scripts instead of one two page script. And it also was partly because if I looked at what other people have been doing or other companies, organizations, parties, if you will, had been doing this by itself was sufficient and not everybody wanted the things that go beyond bold italic underline strike through and um, therefore it gave me something um, more modular that I could deploy. Um, and that's what I did. So uh, this script will look remarkably similar, at least in the top portion to what I did before. Uh, and I did lean, um, I'm using the set field. Uh, there was community post, um, a couple talented developers were doing it differently. Like instead of set, which is what I used, which works, they were using something else that works. They were using replace, which apparently can be used, and they were using insert. And it was on community. I was looking around for it a little bit earlier. Maybe if someone asks, we can drop it in the community post later. Because uh, there's more, you know, look at look at the different ways of doing it. You know, pick the one you like most. Um, so this one, I'm going to walk through this a little bit. I have to, every time I look at this, I have to think, how the heck does this work? So um, this is, okay, first off, I'm, I do this if zero, I throw it away. Not everyone likes that, I do. Because then if something else comes up, I can just hit duplicate. Um, anyway, it's one line, it's not gonna kill me. The uh, parameter bold, um, B bold, whatever, um, good parameter. So on line 17, I'm like, if I were to format and add bold, because if I had bold twice in a row, it's still gonna be bold. So, but I'll, I'll add bold and I'm like, hey, how does it compare with what I got? 
and this is the toggle. Um, and anyway, it's up on the screen. You can look at it. Uh, it basically, or just copy it. It basically causes the toggle, which is nice. Like I'm here, I hit bold. Whoops, I didn't mean to hit bold. It's gone. No harm, no foul. Um, all right, so that's the toggle. I wanted to show you the toggle. I thought the toggle's clever. Uh, let's see, what have we got here? Script debugger. We did bold. And, you know, this is all the same. Uh, so let's see, lower. All right, so that's, like I said, text compatible too. Upper, lower. And I don't find a whole... I don't personally use the double underline. I think I'm happy it's there. Oh, and by the way, here's a bug in the presentation. I remember seeing that. Why is this here twice? That's a that's a mistake, actually. But you get the idea. Um, the previous thing, you know what the things are. But let's do upper lower. That's uh, this I actually do. But this is just formatting, so I wouldn't even use it that much. I'm going to come back on that. This is let's do this one because that leads into a different. Uh, function, uh, not function, well, it is functions, a different collection of functions to modify. This is not um, changing the visual appearance. This is actually changing the text. And once again, same up top, only got to learn one pattern, lower, proper, and upper. Um, and there's no toggle here, but there is, you know, if I went upper and I'm, whoops, I meant proper, that's the toggle. Let's click it again. Um, and this is, I think I said it before, I'll say it again. This is useful if you are uh, copying something from the web, it might come in all uppercase. I'm not a big fan of uppercase for most uses. Hard to read, a little bit too square, doesn't have shape. Um, but there you go, lower, proper, upper. And it's the same script. Uh, I think maybe I did this at a different time because that's insert before. Uh, that actually might, uh, not every script I write uh, is perfect. That might have some cruft when I was working it out. All right, so we covered, um, because uh, that's actually probably, I think initially that's what happened. Initially, eight years ago or so, I wrote all this as one monolithic script. And I was like, you know, I was pretty excited about the features I was adding. And then I was like, wow, this is like one really long script. And then I started to break it down and I said, wait a second, shouldn't the style be a separate script from the color and the modify different from that and so forth? And then like, yeah, it should. And so then I broke it all apart. Um, that's what I did. Okay. Uh, I don't really use the, um, I don't really use the font much. I just don't, although it's awesome that it's there. I also don't do this. Uh, what's the other one? I don't do too much. The size. Mostly because um, I like it when things stay on the letting. Uh, and if I do size, it changes it. Oh, I can think of a use case for size. Like you have some text that doesn't fit in the box and use the get layout object height trick to figure out, figure that out. And then maybe like shrink it from 11 to 10 just to get it to fit. Uh, anyway, there's lots you could do. But I'll skip that because I don't really have a demo for that. I will, uh, you know, jump, like I said, jumping around. Here is, um, let's see, what, what do we have? Here is text as get as CSS. I'm going to take out all, uh, that's the get as CSS. And we used it to do the toggle in the style thing. And I am going to remove this just so you can see. Oh, wow. Okay. So... Where are my BRs? Uh, I sent this up recently. Maybe that needs a little bit of a refresh. All right, ignore that for now. Uh, let's move on to something that I use more often. Uh, okay, so here is text. So on the left, we have text, file maker text field, just a vanilla file maker text field. On the right-hand side, we have a web viewer, which is looking at this uh, text field side by side. Um, and by the way, over here, here, I'll just point at it. See, it says unstyled. Okay, I'm going to take this, um, what am I going to do first? I'm going to highlight this thing, and I'm going to say wrap with ptext. Uh, and now my web viewer is, uh, you know, noticing tags. 
uh, and by the way, actually, let me back up a second. The, um, I started with this. I'm going to do quick just for the heck of it. When I do bold, uh, A, I put a tag on. And, and by the way, that toggles as well. I'll do it this way, actually. Okay, so I have, now you can read it. It's starting to look. The code that I have on the left, just if you visually line it up from left to right, lines up nice, like what I see here and what I see here line up. And that's intentional. Obviously, HTML ignores white space, uh, you know, between the tags, I guess. Um, so I can do white space. The other thing that I like to do, you know, work in the platform, is whilst I put this tag in, which, by the way, can toggle. Um, and by the way, this is my get a CSS. I don't know. You know, I think this may be a little sleepy. I'm not sure why. It was my fault, for sure. Um, but not only am I putting the tag in, but I'm choosing to gray out the tags because I want the text to pop for obvious reasons. Um, okay, so the tags that I have here are in part based on what the Apple script, which will locate and post somewhere, which makes use of Apple script Objective-C, which was one of Apple's relatively recent additions to their support for Apple script, which is very profound. And FileMaker does a really good job with Apple script as well. All right, I got that in, a little commercial there. The um, uh, so the the HTML tags, are, you know, the basic things. You can make a pretty email. Uh, I'm not doing images. Um, I, I can do. You can do attachments with the um, Apple Script Objective C to Apple Mail. Um, but let's do an unordered list. Oh no, no, I meant to have a, an ordered list, so I have to turn that off. Turn that on. So I'm toggling. Um, basically, I'm just building on the same functionality. This one's a little bit more complicated. Um, oh, and actually, let's do one more. This is, uh, we had the insert. That's on the front page of the infographic. I'm curious how you undo the ordered list. Um, I will show you. Um, and we're going from simple to complex here. Uh, let's do the ordered list. Okay. So, script debugger, uh, ordered lists. I got to click on that. By the way, if I don't click precisely this thing, it, it's not super forgiving, that's for sure. Okay, so the same selection concepts. Uh, and then, oh, I got to do the href for you. Very proud of that. Uh, then, okay, so I've, I'm passing in parameters. The parameters are named identical to the button or actually in this case they are. And I, I do that when I can. I didn't do it for the B. I use bold instead of B. And by the way, I'm using bold instead of strong, which are, um, one of them is actually semantically correct, strong, but B is easier to type, or B is less footprint. But uh, to Eric's question, href, a B, I think I, I took out the block quote because I, I don't use it. Uh, that's the break tag. That's code, which I don't use it. I don't use comment. That's DEL. That one works. Div, italics. By the way, most of these blocks are pretty much the same. Uh, INS stands for something. I'm sure. P, I know that one, paragraph tag. Unordered list. Okay. I guess this is how I do it. Uh, ah, hold on. When you put the mouse at the top, the web viewer stuff shows up. Yeah, so there is a loop in here. There is a loop. And um, very, very brute force. Uh, it does work. Probably other ways to do it. You know, people, uh, uh, you know, I'll say it at multiple times. I tend to program, I've said that at one of the previous presentations, I mentioned I like to program where every, as much as possible is visible in the horizontal plane without having to drill down into calculations. Although I've, I've done it at least once in one of the things I showed here today, nothing against it. I just tend to program that way. Um, and then to Keith uh, Proctor, you know, it's it's possible that if I was doing more things in the calculation space versus the script step space, it might be a few nanoseconds faster. I just never had any um, 
speed issues. Uh, and then I, once again, I always skew towards readability for the benefit of, uh, you know, all kinds of people, myself included. So, um, so it, anyway, let's just a quick walk through. Um, this is actually too long to be able to even, you know, I don't know who could wrap their head around it in like two minutes, but here we go. You know, it's like what's before, what's after. Um, eight years ago, I got to look at this uh, list. Actually, this was more recent. List text before indent characters. Uh, I'm using uh, what do you call them? You know, for those of you who don't, you know, maybe have char nine as a a, a tab. If you don't have that memorized, um, so I'm naming things because it just makes the code readable. So when I get to something, um, and here I'm doing something which is oh I got to go into the script debugger anyway. Um, maybe this is a good time to say that if you, anyone who sends me an email, I'll put the email up a little bit later in the presentation, I will send you uh, a file that contains this code. Um, most likely I'll just email it to you. Um, I do have a GitHub account. I don't use it that much, although I, and maybe I'll put something up on GitHub, but in any case, if anyone wants to copy this, I'll send it. And, you know, actually, to be honest, it's nice to know who's uh, looking at things. Uh, oh, and look at that green. A little inline comment there. Uh, oh, that's actually, I'm not even sure. Yeah, hold on. I, I got the right one. Uh, I'd have to look at this more closely. Um, hold on. Let me look at the ordered list. I did the unordered list. I, I think I might have some cruft in there. Uh, here's the ordered list. I'm wondering where the color comes in. I might have changed the color. Uh, anyway, it works and you can do it and I'll send you the code. How's that? Well, nice thing that, Oh, there's the ordered this. list. Why do why I don't know why I thought that was green. Why is that a good idea? The nice thing about it being in in a script is that you can actually follow through in a script debugger where if it was in a calculation, it's, it's yep. in and out and you don't know a thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I actually I, I um I don't I I may once I get through the two things that are sort of advertised in the presentation, I might bring up something that I was working on, which is a custom function. One of the tricks, uh, I put it out there on FM soup that you can use in Mac OS X service to change a tilde to a double dollar sign. So you can get, you can get, makes it a little easier to debug a calc. That all said, a script is easier to debug than a calc. Although there's ways, that said, there's ways to make a calculation easier to debug than it would be otherwise. And the best way that I can think of open to if anyone has a different idea is I've got a little Mac OS X service that I posted somewhere, FM soup that enables you to, I've got two, one of them takes tilde to double dollar sign. Then when you call it, you get your data viewer populated with double dollar sign. And then the other one takes double dollar sign and puts it back to tilde, which is what you would do when you put it into production. Um, so that's my debugging strategy for writing let the calculations, uh, you know, I'm always a complicated calculation. Always going to use a let. Always going to use tilde. And um, if you just, you know, write the calculation like a script, brute force, tilde, tilde, tilde. You know, that works. Um, anyway, that was verbal. I'm sorry I didn't have a visual on that, but uh, good thing it's recorded. Um, okay, so that is an HTML editor. Uh, let's see. Uh, I should thank you, Eric, for the question. Um, I'm going to look at the chat and I'm going to pause here for questions as promised. Um, and hold on one second. Do you have undo? Uh, I see the question. Do you have undo? My toggle is the closest I'm coming to undo. Um, hold on. I'm going to, and I have to, I could blow this up easily. I'm not going to. Uh, I do have a remove tags. That's an undo. And for, for Would you say uh, having a multiple undo, like undo two or three things that you messed up, or like, um, what, like for instance, that when you were that you what made me think of that is when you had that all button that would clear out everything. Yeah. It's like, oops. <laughs> right. So then, how do you undo that? <laughs> well, I mean, there, there's if I if I do uh, first off, I don't really have what that is, but if I do something, you know, where I, I mean, this is actually the undo for that. If I go upper, the undo is to hit lower. I mean, that wouldn't fix everything like Mr. O'Malley, for instance, there's no function for like, you know, give me the, uh, 
those things, you know, those names that have those tricky spelling, tricky capitalization rather. Um, but yeah, the, here's the sledgehammer where it's, uh, uh, that's a style, a color and so forth and so on. Um, uh, I, I mean, no, I don't really have an undo. Truth of the matter is, um, you know, when I'm doing this, uh, most often I'm using this HTML editor thing to create an HTML email that is in the template file in a FileMaker correspondence generation system so that when I send out emails to people, you know, I might have a customer ask me about, hey, when did the, um, uh, hey, what do you think of popovers? Uh, and that was like in the last, pre the presentation I did last year where I, I might send the customer an infographic on popovers, kind of saying, hey, there's this cool thing called popovers and here's how they work and here's what you can do with them. And I might send that in these days because I can with the uh, Apple script that uh, taps Objective-C to do an HTML email and mail, I can send a prettier email, a more visually pleasing email, a more impressive email. That's, by the way, one email. Um, so, but I don't have an undo, because basically it's me carefully building. Oh, and speaking of which, I do have something that uh, is useful. Well, I do have a, I mean, I don't know if anybody else here has any ideas, like, but how, how do you think you would go about doing an undo for that if you were to? I don't it? think I'd have, well, actually, hold on. Let's see if I was going to do that. Uh, I suppose you could have some collection of uh, maybe an associated table where every time you make a change to the working field, you basically create a history record that contains the, um, you know, the contents of this field, um, including its styling, you know, pass it in with a global so it maintains the styling. And, and that would give you a rollback. So you could do it that way if you wanted to have an associated table. So just, just store the whole thing, probably maybe in a, even in a variable. And just yeah, I can, yeah, because that's what I see. We don't see, I mean, someone who had access to the code under the hood could probably do a more memory efficient representation, but, you know, working on the layer of the stack that I'm working at, I uh, would just, every time I hit a button, well, actually I might even, I'd be, I'd, I'd lobby for like having it be save, you know what I mean? Rather than having every time I do anything. Yeah. Hey, Tony, if you stick it in a variable, wouldn't you lose your formatting? You would absolutely. And that's a good point. Um, if you, if you pass styled text. Certainly, if you pass it from file to file, you lose formatting. If you pass it, if you stick it in a variable within the same file, you may or may not lose formatting. I'd have to test that. Certainly, passing from one file to another guaranteed you lose formatting. If, and here's the good news, if you pass um, styled text, you can pass styled text from one location to another location by going old school. Set a global. This is what we used to do before variables. Set a global. You know, toss it over the fence. Go to the other file and pick up the global. Like put it in the global in the main menu. And you can preserve styles, formatted text. Just use the global. Uh, and I'd have to, like I said, I'd have to test to see if I need to do that for styled text within the same file. But it can be done when needed. Also good for containers. Um, if you want to maintain the metadata, you can pass containers with, um, I think you lose the metadata unless you go through a global, uh, Maka said that at the DEF CON presentation, Maka, who has a last name that's Encardo something, uh, shout out. Don't know that. Anyway, here we go. The, uh, and by, hey, look at that in HTML, by the way, this does not toggle, but I'm pretty happy that I can do an HTML link and look, it shows up. Oh, but wait, I need a break. A break tag. Ta-da. Look at that. This email is ready to go. Wait, I missed By that. Way, what's you that? Selected, I missed what you did there. You selected the text that was the hyperlink and then clicked that button. Yeah, let me do it again. And by the way, because I do not have an undo, uh, I am going to do this manually. And and basically, because it's me, <laughs> I just have to be precise. That'll teach you. Uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and then here, let's take the break tag. So. Here is, 
here is a left of its own devices. This is what it would look like. And then I'm like, oh, that would look better if I bold that. And then my email is, oh, that's funny me. Uh, how about this one instead? Uh, okay, so that's, uh, I said bold, but I meant to say um, strong, but I'm using B just because whatever. I don't know, I don't think we're seeing the right screen. Uh, hold on, let me, here's what I'm going to do. The, um, let me ask you a question then. Do you see me highlighting the uh, the link? Or did the? No. Okay. I see, I see your debugger window. I must, I must, anybody else see the same thing? Yeah, yeah, I see him. Hi it, he just highlighted YouTube.com, whatever. Okay. So, um, so we, uh, uh, yeah, uh, anybody else? Um, so I think it may be, um, you know, we're troubleshooting here. We're troubleshooting online here, real time. Um, any, anyone else? So er, anyone else besides Eric sees the, uh, Vince, let me try this. I got a spotlight. That's easy. Anybody else see a spotlight on the, on the screen? Yep. Okay. Okay, so I'm getting yes in the chat and I got an audible yes. So okay. I think uh, it must be me or my end. I'll take a look. Sorry. Yeah, probably you're windowing. <laughs> well, it could be, uh, you know, Vince is coming all the way from Germany and it's three o'clock. And do they shut down the internet in Germany at 3 a.m.? That's the joke. Oh, please, please continue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, all right. So I'm going to highlight uh, Vince in a very good thing I recorded. The, um, so I highlighted the URL, and I'm basically, this is sort of similar to everything else. Uh, do you want to see the code, or you want me to just show you the before and after? I just the before and after. I just, I just... Okay. So I just highlight the URL, and when I click... It, well, the reason I asked was because I was wondering if it, it just automatically found the URL, you know, the like, way no. Gmail does. It no, goes out and finds the URLs and types nah, it in. Um... Uh, I don't know why. I just don't. Um, and actually, you know, that would be a, you know, 2.0 or 3.0 or whatever. Uh, because I would then, yes, I would be able to programmatically traverse. Um, and yes, you can do that. I have not done that. It can be done. There's some custom functions up on uh, the Brian Downing site that do that. I just haven't done it. Um, and I'm not doing this a million times a day. I'm basically adding a correspondence generation record. How often? And, you know, every once a week, let's say, so it doesn't, uh, and then there's a break tag and then there we go. Uh, all right. So I, let's see, how am I doing on time? Um, what's my target out time? I forget. And, and by the way, I'm just the real time. Not, I'm not asking for more time. Hey, Eric. I'm oh, sorry, I was, I was muted. If you, if you have I'm going to switch to go to the next topic. I'm sorry, go ahead. What's the question? If you have preformatted text and you paste that in here, that, that would turn out, they would capture all that? Yeah, style text. If I copy text from an email or from um, the web, it will come in styled. And usually the first thing I will do is remove all I usually have a notes field. Um, and by the way, a demonstration, come on. A demonstration that here's a separate field. Here's the same buttons. They work because of the thing I mentioned earlier that uh, if you don't tell which field, then you have something that works in every field. We have one project where one set of buttons works on four different fields, which is nice. Um, yeah, Eric, your question, uh, I frequently have a field called notes. So if I scrape something from email or from the web, I will um, drop it in notes and then I'll clean it. Uh, and then I'll drag it. <clears throat> I'll often drag it onto little circles that um, parse it and put it in the right fields. Like full name, I'll drop it somewhere and it'll populate the first, middle, last as needed. Or I'll, you know, email. I'll, I, I'm not, I don't have that on the menu today, but just shout out to yet another thing that you can do with a script trigger or with the FileMaker platform script triggers in that case. But yeah, I bring it in and then I hit the sledgehammer. Um, okay. And then, me, and then 
Caitlin uh, said she'd really be interested in that link regarding what? What was that? Editable HTML emails. Uh, you oh, made yeah. a, a passing comment, I think, about using Apple Script. Yes. So I promise you, and we'll get a little community engagement if you're up for it. If you, it'll either appear on community, but if you post and ask, you know what, I'll just make a note to myself. I will, if you go to the community page, I will post that link. Not, not this instant, but tomorrow, let's say. Okay. Terrific. Thanks. Okay. Uh, let me note to self. And in the highly unlikely event that I forget, remind me, but I won't forget. Post, uh, hold on, Apple script. Okay. Got it. Done. All right. I'm looking at the chat here before we move on. We're getting ready to move on. Get your questions in. Okay. Uh, I think we have completed this module. Let me just look. Boom, boom, boom. Yep, yep, yep. And by the way, this is re this is redundant. That's doesn't need to be there. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. Actually, I'm going to walk to the kitchen and back. I'll be back in 60 seconds. I'm going to get a beverage. Um, and I'll be back in 60 seconds. <clears throat> 60 seconds. Um, well, I was just going to mention one other use case that he was, because he mentioned a bunch of use cases, you know, just today I was thinking about, there was somebody who wanted to be able to edit their own help contents for context for the, uh, like a layout. And I was saying, well, you know, because they want me to put a box on this layout and they wanted to fill in the, whatever help information they were going to give the other customer. Cause this was a business analyst that kind of doing kind of going between me and the, and the end customer. And that business analyst wanted to provide the uh, the help information. She would be able to go in there and edit it. And this is like one of those cases where I'd want something like it'd be nice if she could format the text and get it all in there, and then it would display. And then I wouldn't have to be involved at all. I wouldn't have to put it somewhere on the layout for her, or give her access to the layout to edit it. She could just do that and 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 post that there, format it, and everything. Um, but one other one of the other. Um, Text editors that had me interested was the um, what was that one have a, a rich text editor that's a what do they call that an add on in, in FileMaker and that one was kind of interesting not perfect but it was it was it allows the inline images and things like that so it's, a, it's another approach to this the, the nice thing about Tony's approach here is I, I can I can fully understand what's going on there because I don't I don't know JavaScript very well and this one's like much easier to read so I, I think they're complementary yeah. <clears throat> you know and they're not mutually exclusive. They're like, in some cases, you'd want the one that is um, the quill. I think it's under JavaScript quill under the hood. I could be wrong about that. The add on. <clears throat> and um, this is actually coming at it from the opposite. You know, so you could JavaScript to build what you build, and then you extract it as text for what purpose. And this is the other way text to build HTML. And also just the other things for formatting colorful letters. <laughs> and and text on the screen, and I heard um, Eric, you were talking about a help ticket. I use it. I use this feature in a help ticket because I get a help request in uh, a feature request most often. Uh, every now and then a bug request. The um, and then I will use the text as I'm reading it to highlight the words that I need to kind of simplify. Because you know they might give me like a 200 word explanation, but I just need to know you know button by this name. And as I'm reading, I'll bold things so that I can go back and say what I need to pay attention to. So anyway, a lot of uses for that. I would say a lot of use cases. Um, and um, so I'm back. I got a beverage. I'm ready for anything. And uh, if everybody's ready, um, I'm going to do things that you find useful on a list view. Uh, and I'm going to jump around a little bit. Oh, and then the, 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 big, the big show here is a, a sorting thing. But I'm going to, I'm going to knock off some small things 1st. Um, so here's a feature that I like. <laughs> Thank you. I saw the chat. Um, here's a feature that I like called fit rows. And so I have a list view, obviously. And oh, look at all this space right here. I might, I might be working on, you know, I might have other windows open. Maybe I have a mail, uh, client open Apple mail or some other client. 
and uh, or maybe I have an Excel spreadsheet uh, or web page or whatever, uh, and I don't, this space is not being used. So I fit rows. There we go. So you click this button and fit rows. This is actually relatively simple. Uh, not This is not anything new. Um, or it might be new to some people watching this. It was like, you haven't done this. You could do this. Look how easy it is. So uh, I named the script adjust window fit rows. Uh, and obviously BTN takes a parameter. Uh, does it even take a parameter? It doesn't take a parameter. Anyway, don't don't add a P. If you do this yourself, don't add a P. The, um, oh, I will bring this up. Uh, all right, so I, I name an object name, part name, by the way. Spoiler alert, this is called part name. That's got an object name. Uh, and then I have a subroutine that goes into pretty much every single file. I actually wrote it three different ways. One is probably better than the other two. And it is called val, which is short for validate. Object name is on layout or halt. So we always do this. It's like if I have an object name, I I I don't want it to disappear, get renamed, duplicated. If it if it disappears, I want a subroutine. Okay, I'm using filtered values. That might be the fastest way. I've done it with position. I've done it with substitute. That's a mistake because it's case sensitive and that's a bad idea. Filtered values seems like a nice way to do it. So I, I do take the parameter object name. I use layout object names. And by the way, this should be open quote, close quote uh, to get the current object names. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it for now. But anyway, this should be, instead of get file name, it should say open quote, close quote. I think this is from a while ago. I hope so. Then object is not on layout. I'm, I am declaring a variable prior to putting it into the if statement. I think that gives me a little bit more debugability because by the time I'm running the if statement, I'm not 100% sure what value was used. If I put all this calculation in here, that might be. So I'd, I'd like to declare it ahead of time. Like I say, very verbose, very readable, nothing wrong with that. Uh, and then a big surprise, it is on the layout and that's a good thing. So that is, uh, that's the, oh, hold on, let's go. What's the fit rows bit? Uh, I just bailed too soon. Okay, anyway, header, body, and footer. Uh, simple math. Um, uh, and a lot of these I wrote a while ago, that object name content. I think I might've been playing around with that. Oh, I'm getting the content. I have a text, that's it. Get layout object attributes. I've got the object name, which I've already made sure is there. I'm grabbing the layout object attribute called content, which you can see right here is H equals this, that, and so forth. I am then determining the status bar, which is just an arbitrary number, the header, uh, which is defined here, the body, which is also defined here, the footer, and that has my mat, the height of the rows, which I have defined, uh, the get found count, that's how many, the body that I defined, that's 19, that's 19 in case, you, and then here we go, and they multiply it out, and then the total would be the status bar, plus the header, plus the footer, plus the height of the rows, which is the height of one row multiplied by the number of rows based on get found count. And then I move and resize the window. So it's a relatively simple script. And uh, one of my personal favorites, um, and here is the, somewhere in here, it's, trust me when I say it's got an object name. And the object name is called, what the heck is it called? Uh, object part heights, you could call it anything different. So anyway, a tiny little feature there. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's see. Let's do, uh, all right, let's start early. Uh, let's do the complicated one. Okay, complicated. So this is something that I, uh, a little backstory here. I, I, I've got, I had a sort script from many years ago, 15 years ago. And then I, I'm not sure if I came up with it myself or someone else, because other people have done this. I can't remember, to be honest. Uh, I said, there's gotta be a better way to do sorting. And uh, th this yeah, one has- wait, Before you move on to sorting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, another, question. Could I see another demo of, of what, what it was that you were doing with the, um... Um, counting all the rows and yeah okay yeah let me let me go there the the header is um 
117. Mm -hmm. So I put H equals 117. The body, I'll click on it, is 19. Oh. Right, but what are you doing? What are you doing with all that information? What is that? Oh, uh, let me run the script again. Basically, yeah. the the premise of this is that if I, for whatever reason, am working in the layout space, and I decide, you know, we do this all the time, right? We're constantly saying I don't need that much space, right? I must have something over here. Oh no! Hold on. Get rid of that. Um, I'm demonstrating everything on my secondary computer. My primary computer is, doesn't have Omnigraphle on it. Uh, okay, so I made the footer smaller. So let me, I, I just basically hopefully broke the code. So you look at that, I broke the code. Let me go fix the code. The footer is now 124, 124. And fit rows works. So the premise is that uh, all I'm, I didn't go to, I didn't touch a script. This is a concept that is sort of, I like a lot the idea of, and I, I don't think it's new, but if I can have a script that I don't have to touch, that means if I can work only in layout space, you know, here, I'll break it the other way. I'll make that bigger. God knows why. I'll make it that much bigger. And then I'll do my fit rows feature. And all of a sudden I can't see everything. It's broken. I got 20, I can only see 13, I broke it. Um, but if I make it smaller again, uh, so I'm, it gives me the ability to um, just have a feature that I like, which is fit rows. And then if I move things around a little bit, it still works. And by the way, it's not gonna fit the rows if you have like a thousand rows, it's not magic. Um, does that, oh, and then let me show you the script again. Um, cause there is a, I think there's a get as number in here or there's a mathematical get value, get as number. There we go. So uh, for the user interface, I'm saying H equals this B equals that. Otherwise, what are these numbers? Like what the heck are those H for header? And I'm, I'm not going to spell it out. I don't want to take that much, but this is enough to know what's going on. H B F header body footer. Okay. And then it's a, it's a, what do you call this thing? It's a list. Essentially it's a list. It's not a value list, but it's a list. It's three lines of text. That's a list, right? And then uh, FileMaker's got uh, lots of really nice functions for dealing with lists and JSON. Don't forget JSON. Um, but lists, you know, I don't, I don't need JSON for that. Um, even though JSON's great, I can use a list because there it is and it works because I've got this function get value which gets the value of a list. And I want the first value for the header. I don't want the H equals, I just want the number. So get his number, get value. Get his value, you get, you know, boom, 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 header, body, footer. That's how it gets extracted right here. Sound good? Follow up question? Just and then it resizes the window for... Yeah, and then we're using the uh, move resize window. And That's actually right. on that, the, if I drill down into that script step, then um, if you only use, I mean, there's a lot of things you could do. I could even change the name of the window and the same thing. If I'm only doing, uh, if I'm only changing one thing, I only have to give it one parameter. It'll keep everything else the same. In other words, it didn't change the top. I could have told it to change the top. I didn't want to, but you know, sometimes we move it. And in this case, I guess we're resizing it. So that's all. The only thing that's changing is the height. Um, and by the way, let me let me show you this. Um, let me show you something that's complementary. Another another look at the same feature set, if you will. Uh, this these four buttons here. This went out as a fun FileMaker fact as well, leveraging the FileMaker Liquid Layout concept. So FileMaker has well here. I'll demonstrate it first. FileMaker has, uh, I'll demonstrate it from the detail, although this isn't the most exciting detail screen, has uh, liquid layouts. This bigger monitor, these are actually, I'm not, I don't really have a big monitor uh, for this, but what is the point? These buttons resize the window. 
uh, which is hard to demo and because I'm zoomed in 30 inch monitor, it would demo real good. Um, what do I have adjust window things that I might want to do when I adjust a window. Um, by the way, 30 inch monitor, this fits great. Uh, it fits on the screen. Okay. When I open it takes a parameter. By the way, my latest thing is like uh, fewer lines is good. Uh, might as well put that next to that. All right, if I don't give it a parameter, it's gonna halt. I could probably throw that away, but I put it in just whatever. I might wanna maximize the window, maximize the height, maximize the width or, or resize to fit. These map to the four buttons. Um, and the maximize, adjust the windows uses adjust window, maximize, that's one of the choices. The maximize height, uh, it does a little two-step. It zooms it up and um, and that'll just maximize the height and or it can maximize the width or resize to fit. And then if I really mess up, I get a help ticket, which doesn't happen actually. Um, so th this is the adjust window script step. Uh, and then here's the move. So these are kind of, you know, they pair nicely together. And here I'm passing two things as opposed to one. So you can, you know, pass what's appropriate. Here I'm using the same, same. And, um, um, you know, a lot of these like just deploy it once and after a while it's like, um, what else could I say about that? Um, so this one fits rows and then this one does some zooming that's hard to demonstrate. Hold on, let me do, yeah, that one, there, that demonstrates. This is the, uh, but this is more about liquid layout. And I, because I'm zoomed in, it's, I can't demonstrate that. So I should, I'll focus on the other things that I can demonstrate. Um, so let me, um, so, so I'm going to move on, I'm going to move on to this sort thing here. Uh, and this is the most complicated thing that I have here. So I might as well do it now. For, so first let's demonstrate what the heck it does. Uh, okay. So I had a sort script, um, before, and I still do, cause there's still a use case for it. Um, the problem with it, the reason I built this other one was because when I wanted to add a sort to a label, I had to go to different places, two different zones. I had to go to, I had to do something on the layout, obviously, cause I had to have a button to sort. And then I had to go to the script and embed the, um, so I had to go to two different zones. And at some point I was thinking, wouldn't it be great if I could do everything from one place with, once again, a black box script? And the answer is, is yes, you can do it. So this is all calling a black box. If I had another field, I can just, um, I don't have to touch the script. Uh, and so let's see, what does it do? So if it's a number field, and by the way, this one's kind of fun because it utilizes, A, it works good, uh, and B, it utilizes a remarkable number of FileMaker uh, functions that are underutilized, things that you don't see every day. Um, okay, so number, if, if, uh, and, and the way that it sorts, so now they all toggle. And this one uh, toggles based on the value list. So let's see, let's do it first. So this is scripting layouts and data model. Uh, by the way, sample data is like infographics that we've done. Some of them we showed at the last year's presentation. Um, I figured that's good sample data. Uh, so, but, and then categorize, these are things pertaining to scripting. These are things pertaining to lads. These are things pertaining to data model. So that is obvious, that's alphabetical in reverse order, I think. Ascending, descending, that would be descending maybe, who knows. So when I click it again, that is by value list because you can tell D is the, you know, alphabetically D precedes S and L and, but yet it's in the middle. So that's the value list purposely configured to demonstrate the ability to sort data by a value list. And so that's the demonstration. And we'll see the code that does that. And I'll click it again. So this is alphabetical. I believe that's ascending. 
This is descending. This is by value list. Ascending, descending, value list. Okay, so that's a toggle between three different ways. Uh, date. Now we mimic the Apple interface in a way that is um, uh, the way Apple does it, and we just figured that you know Apple knows what they're doing because they do. Um, the uh, the first time you click it, it sorts a particular. I'll use number as an example. I think. Let's see. So if I click away, or click on something else, and I, the first time I click number, it is ascending. If I click it twice in a row, it's descending. Um, if I click it, you know, so it's toggling. But if I click away, like if I click now, it'll be descending. But if I click away and click back, it'll be ascending. That's the way Apple does it. Um, so that's the way we did it. And, uh, you know, daytime, you can play around with these. Um, but let's look at the code. Um, and you could also, I suppose, change them. So let's look at the script that does this. Uh, and we've sample data, by the way, number, text, uh, date, and we time and timestamp treat the same. Apple does, and the Apple Finder windows is what I was looking at, you know, because Apple treats the different data that they present in the Finder window based on its data type is present, is the action uh, is different. Um, but, and this could be, you know, someone could take the script and do it differently. That's fine, obviously. Uh, I'm going to walk through this, you know, once again, you know, send me an email and say, hey, send me that. Uh, and by the way, there's one tiny, tiny, tiny little flaw that I've left in there, partly for fun, partly out of laziness. And I don't know, I'll tell you at some point. So I'm going to walk through this line by line. And once again, this is very complicated, this script. I'd say it's complicated. So if you're not in the browse mode, uh, turn it off. No point in sorting if you're in the find mode. If the found count is zero, let's bail out of the script, right? Uh, I'm turning error capture in right at the beginning. Error capture on. Uh, hey, we want some of our favorite object name stuff. And I wouldn't be surprised if this has a different thing. Uh, then I'm going to go to the object once I know it's there. I'm going to set the selection to nothing out of an abundance of paranoia that someone might hit the delete key as the script is running. I just threw that in for fun. Now, I promised you the um, functions that are seldom used. Field type. And by the way, I'm here I am correctly not specifying the file name. Although I think that might be optional. But anyway, um, very often it's best not to specify the file name so that it targets the internal file. And that's in the documentation. Could be in the example files. So that's the field type. And the field type, uh, uh, what does it do? It gives you um, of data as one line. So you take the middle word, you take the second word, and that is the... Uh, yes, sir. Me. Yes, sir. What do you mean by target the internal file? Can you oh, go back to that point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, Some of the design functions, uh, let me pick a good one. Um, if, say, layout object names or layout IDs, the, the functions that take get file name as the first parameter have a little bit of a gotcha that if you, and I did test this recently, <clears throat> if you have two files open with exactly the same name and you run a function from within a file that you're looking at, it the design function will sometimes target the other file that's open with the same name. You know, I don't know if it's based on the which order, like if you open one file on the desktop and one file hosted for, and that's plausible, could happen. You might get an unexpected result. It might, you know, target the first file you opened. The good news is that if you just, and you know, you can test this, play around with it, and you know, set up two files with the same name and just play around with opening, you know, and put different layout names in them, for instance, and open one and open the other. I don't have it as a demo, but I did test it recently. I promise. Uh, you would get unexpected results. If you want to target the uh, uh, the design object names in the currently open file, just don't put the file name in, and it works. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, and then I was trying to name these after the way file maker names, and they're like the function is field type, and there's a subtype called field type. So this is called field type, field type, not a typo. All right, and then there we go. The sorts. The, uh, let me open the script. Um, so to replicate the methodology whereby Apple does what they do, uh, and this actually could be done differently, you, uh, depending on the data type, which is returned by the design function, I can decree, decide, and you could, you know, this is what Apple did, so, you know, that's what I'm going to do until someone tells me different. <clears throat> customer says, oh, I want to do, you know, that which you have ascending, I want that to be descending, so you can flip the configs. So that's, um, and, but wait, we're using more of these functions, there's so many functions, we're trying to use every single function. Not in the script, but across time. The field style, that's another function where if you tell it, uh, let's see, for this file, which is the, this is current file, by default, that's the way they do it. Uh, for this layout name, which apparently you do have to specify, I tried specify, I'm pretty sure you have to specify it. I think I tested that. Uh, and layout name should be unique. It's not guaranteed to be unique, but it should be. <clears throat> That's under your control more than other things. And for the get active field name, because I have gone into the, by the way, uh, object names, these uh, fields are named. I'll show you that in a minute, but a lot of this is get active field name. Um, then I've got the style. And then I grab the word one of the style. And now, ta-da, I discern if there's a value list. If the value list, word one of the FileMaker style will either be a pop-up, if it's any one of these, it's a pop-up list, a pop-up menu, checkbox, then it has a value list. But wait, there's more. Uh, and then I'm using a custom function. I could, this is on the Brian Dunning website. I could go drag it down and embed it. Probably a good idea, actually make the code more portable, you know, take the custom function. But here it's a dry example. Uh, and then I am declaring a double dollar sign variable to get persistence between clicks. And I am um, namespacing it, so I'm not colliding, hopefully, with anyone else's variable in case, you know, hopefully nobody, no, they don't have pre-existing code that says TWDI. Um, it's kind of analogous what you do. I could, I guess I could have done com.twdesigns.com to namespace it, but I figure that's pretty safe. Um, so this is the toggle. It's a cycle. First time I click it, I, I, I click it according to the default. Second time I click it, you know, I'm, uh, what am I doing? Oh, I'm keeping a stack. Complicated code, I'll send it to you. Uh, and then and then I'm sorting. This is um, sort records by field, ascending, descending, or associated value list. Um, oh, and that's if, right? So it won't always hit this. If, if there's no value list, um, what are those things called? Yeah, well, I'll call them a value list. You know, checkbox is a value list to make it the checkbox. But if there's none, it'll go cycle, cycle, cycle. If there's a value list, it will, um, it'll cycle. By the way, this is where the small cosmetic bug is, which I'll just tell you, which is that if you have a value list with only one value, it doesn't cycle as cleverly as it could because it's a little, two of the values are the same, because, you know, if it's just a checkbox that's either this or that, um, it's a little redundant. I never it'll, fix that. But it'll at least put the first the, the value that's in there first then, right? Well, when you click it, ascending and descending are the same. One of them, either the ascending or the descending sort is identical to the sort by value list if there's only one value in the value list. Anyway, it's just a, it's never really come. I, I decided not to go fix it. When this was done, I moved on because I think this is pretty good. Let's see it again. Uh, hold on, don't save because it was working great before. Um, here is another piece of the code f.text.demo. That's our naming convention, right? F namespace, that's a field. It's an object name applied to a field. You know, if it was a button, it would be btn. If it was a button bar, it would be bb, and so forth and so on. So when I get the list of object names, we're like, oh, that's a field. And then we do a reverse name. So this is, we do text, we flip it around uh, because um, 
we do the field and then hyphen hyphen demo, which is uh, the TO. And uh, that's the way we do it. Uh, ah, unless it breaks. Well done. Look at that. I could demo how that actually broke the code, but then I fixed it, so it's okay. Um, and so black box, right? Um, and you know, I, I, I'm not going to do it in real time because I probably wouldn't look that like much fun. But you know, another field, I don't need to touch that script, right? Black box, don't have to touch it. That script stays. It's one page. It's going to be one page until the end of time, unless I fix that bug. Maybe it'll get a little bit longer. Uh, cosmetic bug. Um, so that was the most complicated thing that I have. Um, once again, uh, put my, uh, let me see. Maybe I'll put my email up here. Where is that email? Oh, text formatting. I'm going to pivot back to text format demo. Uh, I had a wizard. This is an idea. This is something I built that I haven't gotten anyone convinced that it's useful. <laughs> I thought it was potentially cool. Like here's like all the things you do on this layout. By the way, and you can hide it. You're like, oh, I know how it works. I don't need to see. I'm like, show me how the heck does this work? Or like, what's my task? Uh, hey, I want to style something. Tell me. So it, it's click. So it's a button that goes to object. I'm like, oh, where's my functions for doing the case? Oh, they're over here. By the way, I didn't do much other than say that. And I could traverse. That's my little wizard. And I haven't been able to convince anyone that this is incredibly useful. Although I use it a couple places. But look at that. You can build a wizard in FileMaker. Um, anyway, anyone else doing wizards? A, a big demand for wizards? I would call this not a wizard, but a you know like a help reveal or something like that. It's yeah, maybe that's a. Uh, I mean, you could have features that you do, you know, buttons that you click that do things. But I, I think maybe feature revealer is a better. Maybe that. Oh, and all these are individual popover buttons. Yeah. Uh, popovers. I like to do circles for popovers. That's just in the convention. Um. And these are buttons, and these are popover buttons, and that you know, and then they pop. Yeah. So the circles are popover buttons, and the square are regular buttons. Obviously, it could be a button bar. And then I did because I was kind of running out of colors. I did um, inverse colors, and uh, I played around with like how much color difference I could get as I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, to you know maximize color deltas. By the way, email anybody wants. TW, Tony underscore Um Anyway, it's up on the screen. What's that? Just put that in the chat. Uh, we, we can do that at some point. Can you? Uh, do I get you, it. It? you got it? Yeah. Okay. And then, you know, who knows? I might get spam, but I got pretty good spam filters. And that's okay. So, like I said, send me an email and say, hey, you know, send me that. And then, you know, if you want to, if anyone figures out a way to improve any of this stuff, I'm happy to send it back, you know. And maybe one day I'll do like a formal blog post, but I've been pretty busy with a whole bunch of things. I like to try and cover new territory. Hey, speaking of which, let's cover some new territory. Uh, it's, um, I was thinking about this earlier. It's, you know, it's really FileMaker's fault to build a platform with so many features uh, that it's hard to keep up with them all, especially if you're drilling down deep, you know what I mean? You're like, hey, let me use all the features. Speaking of which, here's a little one, a little palette cleanse. Uh, I have a button, so I'm sorting, right? So this one, and I haven't figured out the UI that I want for this, um, but I have a button that unsorts. And uh, I'm going to do it again in slow motion. And by the way, don't chat. Well, whatever. Do you notice how when I ask it to unsort, the button becomes grayed out. And probably there's a debate as to what it should do when you unsort. Like maybe it should toggle like this. I didn't set that up. Maybe it should toggle, maybe it should sort by the reverse of the record ID or sort by the record ID in the opposite of the unsorted, the underlying record ID. Uh, hold on, let me see if I have an underlying record ID handy. This is shout out to this, these features, which is, um, we put this in every file because we heard something about um, uh, record ID. 
Chris Irvine, right? Isn't it? What's that? Isn't it from Chris Irvine? Uh, yeah, Irvine? Chris. Yeah, shout out to Chris Irvine. Did a lot of work on um, using record ID um, and record number uh, with his blog post Scale FM or Scale.FM. And also, um, Daniel at Wheatbix did some, uh, you know, there was a lot of, you know, just shout out because he, I think he might have been one of the people who also popularized the use of this list of record ID. And why do we have two? That seems a wee bit redundant, he, he asked. Um, the reason is we, um, when you get a list of, we reference the unstored because it's faster. And I think I actually tested that, verified that's true. And then when we, sometimes we will do, um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have a, we'll, uh, we will run a script that does a search on the record ID, which we'll get to that in a second. It may seem counterintuitive because it's like, a, it's not the primary key. But we will actually do that for reasons I'll get to in a second. We'll search on the stored, but we'll gather on the unstored. We gather on the unstored because it's faster for some reason. And we'll search on the stored because that's faster. So that's why we have both. And then the record ID, the list of, which I think is a free. I wanted to ask Keith Proctor, he's such, even with the amount of time that he gave us on his presentation, um, there was still more to cover. Still more questions about how does it work? Um, I think these list of, which is a really terrific feature added in 13 and up, are really, really useful for variety. And if you pair them with the sort values and the unique values that showed up in FileMaker 16, there's a tremendous amount. I, I wouldn't be surprised over time if I have more and more of these list of. And I think they're free because they're summary, like they're only expensive when you call them. So you just call them when you need them. So they're essentially free. I don't think they load up the schema. I don't think they bulk up the data file. Uh, so Vince, you got me started on a couple tangents there. The uh, one thing I want to say, um, well, actually, uh, so Vince, yeah, you were saying, yeah, the record ID, Chris Irvine, and then, um, and then um, uh, Wheatbix blog, uh, Dan, Danny, uh, I think he popular, he was one of the people, let's say, who popularized the list of, and this method of like, list off the unstored and search on the stored. And uh, that lines up with what is my understanding as well. So that's what we do. Um, any questions on that? Um, so that, uh, oh, so that was tangent, how'd we get there? We got there because unstored, so this is grayed out. Why is it grayed out? I shall tell you, uh, because yet another function showing up here today that you don't see every day, uh, custom function, the sort state, get sort state. We have a function called get sort state. And so we're going to use it. Now we actually might make it go away because we might change, instead of having this go unsorted, I might have a toggle where sort by the record ID and the, the reason, uh, spoiler alert, you know, people should go read the Scale FM blog post or um, at DevCon, if you're at DevCon, go find Clay or one of the other uh, developers over there. The record ID seems to be data that is always available or almost always available and it, it exists on the HBAN layer, HBAN, which stands for something like the underlying structure of the record construct that gets downloaded over the wire. Therefore, it is faster for a number of uses then the primary key, primary keys are awesome. But um, the record ID is faster for some reason. And uh, take my word for it because I take their word for it. We actually asked Clay at one of the DevCons and he said, yeah, HBAN, that was good enough for me. So we use that a lot, uh, the record ID for a bunch of purposes, including this, uh, which I'm gonna demo the user interface, but not the code because it's not perfect. Okay, so let me just uh, pause for a second. Let me take a sip of this delicious beverage that I got from the kitchen earlier. It took me less than a minute, by the way. And so to clarify, those who aren't familiar with, with sorting, the sorting and unstored calculation is, is not really much penalty compared to just sorting any field that's already stored. Is that, is that correct? Uh, let me think, sorting and unstored. Most of your sorts, 
your sorts, most of your sorts are going to run faster on fields that are local. Oh, now here's a tricky one that I'm not a thousand percent sure of. The, um, I would say that to answer your question directly, sorting on a field that is unstored for any reason, I would think it would be slower. I guess maybe it depends on how it's unstored. But I mean, you're doing it as, I mean, you, you'd go ahead and do that on thousands and not just a few dozen, right? Well, I would, I mean, if I was demoing, demoing I'd do it on a smaller data set so it, it's faster. Uh, I mean, the more records in the found set, the slower it's going to run. And conversely, the fewer records, the faster it's going to run. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's Nate, that's also true with stored values, right? It's, or, so um, sorts are relatively slow. This, anyway. And by the way, if anyone knows the answer to this with absolute certainty, I'm reluctant to say something that I'm not a thousand percent certain of. The uh, one of the, but I will tell what should be known, and I don't know everything. That's for sure. The um, one of the things that I think is really interesting about the FileMaker platform in terms of knowing how it works is, and I wish I knew more and I wish, you know, the, there was more documentation on some of this, um, is what actions are local. Is because the FileMaker, you know, the part of the FileMaker, you know, is the desktop, let's put it that, the FileMaker and Windows desktops are client server environment, right? I mean, you got to be running on a server unless you're crazy, right? So you got to find like micro server. You can run it local, but that's not, you know, most of the people we're working with have, you know, servers, obviously. The uh, so it's a client server environment, and some of the computations and actions occur on the client side, and some occur on the server side. And so some things result in network traffic, and some things don't. And knowing what happens where is useful. Um, and I guess, um, not a thousand percent, I can, I couldn't give you a really super duper answer on where the sorting occurs. And even with the finding, some of that got moved up to the server under certain circumstances. So don't, I'm not even going to talk about that. Um, so, but what I would say, fewer records, most of the time, one thing I will say, we don't, when we go to a layout. I remember seeing a lot of systems that would go to a layout and they'd always be sorting, like they'd go to a layout and they'd sort, they'd go to a layout and they'd sort. And we usually take those off and say like, you know, we're not always gonna sort. Maybe you didn't want to sort, maybe you wanted to do a fine before sorting, you know what I mean? So in general, we, 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 we don't, I, I don't know if that touches on something useful, um, but I probably shouldn't say too much about sorting. Um, let me let me just move on and, and escape from stuff I don't know, a hundred percent. And uh, here's an omit feature. I'm not sure that this is a hundred percent perfect, but we do this like click one, click one. Hold down here's the tooltip. Uh, shift key omit. So I'm going to click on five. It's going to omit five and everything before eighteen records minus five is thirteen. And then over here, if I hold down the control key and click on ten, it's going to you know leave nine. That's a little omit. Um, we, I'm, I'm just going over some features just for the heck of it. We, here's an interesting thing. We use, this is actually a symbol. It's called a symbol. Uh, it's actually one of the highlighted symbols. There's others. I'll bring this up there. Look at, look at all these things you can do. Oh, and actually I'll jump to that in a second. Uh, I'm using text. So it's a grouped object. I'm thinking of changing this to a button bar. Uh, we, you know, most of our clients, if not, well, you know, all but a few, are um, FileMaker 14 and above. That's when button bars showed up, so we could switch this to button. And then instead of having a grouped object, which is kind of legacy, I could have a button bar. I haven't switched everything over. You know, I've been modernizing our code base here uh, by removing as many grouped objects as I can. These, for instance, are a button. Oh, no. I'm, I'm, this is... This is a sample file, doesn't get as much tea, love as some of the other files, but uh, I recently converted them all over to buttons. Real buttons, not grouped objects. I'm not sure it matters much, but I like to move in the direction of um, grouped objects to buttons or button bars. Because then you, as soon as you get to buttons, you pick up glyphs, 14 and above. As soon as you move to button bars, you also pick up glyphs, 14 and above. 
plus you pick up button bars, which showed up in 14. Real buttons showed up in 12. Anyway, um, lots of ways to move people forward. Lots of opportunities. Um, let's see. Um, not grouped objects. Okay, uh, let me do, I wanna, let me show you this one. Oh, let me pause, uh, let me show you this one and then pause for questions. So I'm gonna go Command J. So here is a feature that I like. Let's get this one out of the way. I'm gonna click this little uh, icon. And this is, so I got a field with an object name because of the sort. Now I'm gonna use that object name and I am, uh, this is another black box script, super short. Um, I actually pivoted this a little bit recently um, to, to do it this way. So I take the param, which happens to be an object name. This could be cleaned up a little bit. Um, I had to come up with why. Um, I gotta make sure the object name is, and that's it. It's basically, this is a simple script that does all it does is goes to the find mode and actually with the value list, that could make this smarter. Like that shouldn't pop. Quite frankly, it should be like that. Or maybe it should pop. Maybe that's not bad. This one, uh, that's not the most exciting script, um, but it's bread and butter. Oh, I said bread and butter. Oh, well. Um, now this one, this one's sort of interesting. So if I'm working with a list, and this is I built for me, I thought, oh, man, this would be easier if I could just have this button that brought everything the same. So I have layouts. So uh, let's do that. This is good for when you're working with um, a bunch of different things, projects, bank bank register stuff. I do FileMaker for bank register, uh, checking balances. Um, reconciling statements, whatnot. Okay, so data model, click same, brought up data model. Okay, that's cool. Then uh, data model, constrain. Uh, actually, let's make it more dramatic. I only have two, right? Obviously, more than two, constrain, data model. Okay, same constrain. Um, so I don't want to put anyone in the spot, but does that say, does that seem like a useful potential feature? I got to rename this. Oh, here's, here's a demo. Here's the wrong way to do it. Okay. This is actually, we're going to get into something um, that I'm not sure everyone's thought of because I only thought of it recently and I can't be the only one. The, this is the way I did it. I don't want to say how long ago, but I thought it was, I thought it was a swell idea to grab the value in the field, which would grab data model, and then enter the find mode and search on equal, equal data model. What could go wrong? And perform the search. And actually it works most of the time. <laughs> this is actually, I don't think anyone's, this is, this is new, this is breaking news here. Uh, and then it was like, well, that doesn't work. If you have characters that, I'll show you some characters that it doesn't work on. Oops. I've been hiding them all this time. Try searching on that. Jeez. Okay. By the way, this is um, not super realistic. The fields that you see happen to be the fields that FileMaker uses to in find requests, so they must be escaped. Uh, I shall demonstrate that. So, the by the way, the find and constrain, or the constraint at least, let's take the constraint is here. This button does the same as that. So I'm going to constrain and it succeeds. I'm going to hit command J again. Uh, now, uh, by the way, I've got two of these. I'm going to hit sample data. I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to select. All right, now, even though I'm in a field that has this extra word code, because when I select that and say constrain, it found both. Okay, so it works either on the whole field. This is, by the way, in the documentation. Turns out it's useful to read from time to time. If I'm nowhere, actually, let's do it again with no selection. So we just saw that if I do it this way, it'll find the one underneath it. Now I'll do it this way, constrain. Okay, so it, it knows what you selected and it knows what you haven't selected. So let's do it again. 
Uh, how do we do that? Constraint. I did that wrong. I must have done that. Oh, because <laughs> oh, find matching. Okay. And by the way, uh, I don't think I need an extend, but it's there. It's well, it's not part of the demo. And by the way, we'll get to this in a moment over here. This is my find. I don't know if we'll get to it. Find step by step. By the way, what's the official time check? What am I supposed to hit if, well, I'm, a, if I'm a professional? Well, if I don't know how many questions and answers we're going to have, but I'll try to wind down to so that we're finishing close to 7.30 normally. 7.30. Okay. So the East Coast. All right. So I got 18 minutes. I can do it. Um, actually, I can hit that easy and, and leave time for questions. Um, all right. Let's think. Okay. So now there is a function. I'm pretty sure it's not on everyone's radar. And when I say everyone, that makes it easy because it's like everyone, that's a lot of people. Um, so when I go here, and that function that was introduced in FileMaker 12 is find matching records. And find, macking re find matching records lets you specify a target field. But I am not going to specify a target field because that keeps it black boxy, right? Uh, but how does the script know which field to target if I don't tell it? Because we have an object name. I already have an object name for the sort. Uh, by the way, same and constraint are pretty much the same. The difference is that has the word constraint, and the other one has the word replace, uh, which equates to, I'm pretty sure that it must mean um, find matching records. Um, because it works, so that's what must be what it means. Uh, anyway, that's FileMaker 12. So we go to the object. You have to be, and if it, you have to succeed, oh, if it's empty, um, yeah, I got to be in a field. Uh, but anyway, the the key thing here is this find matching record, and let's see what it does. Uh, and I could do it this way. Let's do it this way. Uh, let's go with, see what this does. Okay, I'm going to do a refind, uh, which, by the way, I'll do it from here, modify last find, which I think is, I don't know, refind. Uh, I guess the official name is modify last find. Um, okay, so I did not do that, obviously. Uh, you didn't see me do it, and I didn't do it. Who did that? The programmers at uh, Claris FileMaker did that. I think that they know better how to escape a find that needs to be escaped than I do. So I'm going to take their word for it, right? Uh, and how do I get what they did? All I have to do is go to the field with the object, use the script that, that they provided to match with this, and let them handle the escaping for me. You will notice in the script, that successfully works with this complicated thing. At no point did I escape anything. It was done for me through the power of the FileMaker platform. Hey, let me see that script again. Uh, okay. Here's the constraint. And I've got the legacy code, which is like, here's a, here's a way that will not work if you searching on a field. And it's not that unusual to have a field with a greater than or you know, product code with a hash sign, right? And or an email. Um, dots. What's that? Dots. No periods. Yeah, and that. By the way, that's an ellipsis. Yeah, an ellipsis. That's. If it only takes two to cause a problem. Oh, okay. I believe you. Uh, okay. So I don't have to worry about any of that because the programmers worked it all out. The programmers in FileMaker, they know exactly. You know, they see the code under the hood. They escaped it. You know, they know everything that should be escaped. They also escape blank characters. Um, but what I didn't know is that if you did, if you did a, one of those finds on that, it would, that you could recover that, all that escaping by just doing a, a modify last find. Yeah, that gives you like what happened. Huh. That's what happened. And then right over here, you can see they're escaping a space. Yeah, because I use modify uh, last find all the time, but I never, Never knew that it would go and escape things for you like that. Um, yeah, it does. And then, um, oh, all right, I'm going to go to the more complicated. Uh, let's see what next. Watch the time. The uh, 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 This logically follows this. Uh, hold on one second. 
Let me just look at. Um, I'm looking for something that I thought was there. I have an omit selected. Let me just, I don't see, I, I'm supposed to have a button there. Um, omit selected, O-M-I-T, omit content or selected. Okay, uh, this is up on the screen. I don't know where the button is. Um, let me just see if it disappeared behind. What are you doing over there? Um, I don't know why it got banished. Uh, it's back. Okay, so this is one that I, I haven't seen this elsewhere. So, uh, the so I'm working on data, and you know maybe I've done something with the scripting, and I've completed that, and I don't want the word scripting to appear anymore. So I'm going to click omit content. Uh, let's see, let's make it easier to see that it succeeded. Um, okay, very popular. All right, layout appears once, so let's do that first. So I got nine records. I, I'm just clicking on layout, and then I click omit. Hey, one record disappeared. Data model appears, one, two, three. Let's click on that. Eight minus three is five. Okay, so that is a feature. That's, uh, I think at the top of the conversation, I was saying like FileMaker gave us some features. I keep, I can't overuse the word features. FileMaker did shipped functions, script steps, custom functions, layout objects, and so forth. And then um, trying to combine them to achieve a business objective or a, a, what I'll call a feature for lack of a better name. One, if it's empty, I got to be in a field for this to work. That's the way it works. Uh, I got to do this. You know, we, we've all seen this before. It's up on the screen. But then I had this escape text for find. So in this case, because this because this find matching doesn't have an omit, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it doesn't have an omit. So if it had an omit, I wouldn't have the fun opportunity to write a custom function, escape text for find, which, by the way, might. This doesn't exist on the Brian Dunham website. Maybe it will one day. Um, by the way, there's a good presentation last month or this month at the LA group, which is, uh, FM disc, um, gentleman from England did a, he's got a browser solution. That's quite nice, but we're here to look at this, by the way, a little six fried rice, just for old time's sake. Um, we use JSON more and more, obviously. Uh, most of our customers are on 16 and the, the, on the ones that and above, I should say 16, 18, 19, very popular moving up every day. Um, so here's escape custom functions. So for the omit, I, I'm just manually doing that by myself, um, because they ain't built in. That's okay. If it's not built in often, you can build it. And anyway, that works. Um, I haven't bumped into any weird characters that it doesn't. I, I threw some, oh, I could probably do that to prove that it works. Um, I, I haven't tested this. Hopefully this works. Let's see what that does. Hey, it works. Okay, even with the funky characters, because I escaped them, it works. All right. Um, hey, I'll pause for questions here. And if not, I got one more thing to show you. Maybe I'll just, I'm going to bang through this real quick. Um, this is, um, I had a client customer um, who, very savvy, found like a developer, multi-talented person, you know, awesome domain expert, as well as programming chops. Uh, I did one of these. I went to the menu and I did uh, one of these things. I used constraint or extend. And the person said, I think I mentioned this previous presentation person said, oh my goodness, that's amazing. I didn't know that existed because it's under the menu. Great feature under the menu. You know, you can't fit everything. So I decided that it would be swell to um, build a fine step-by-step -step to take pretty much most, if not all, but most of the finding functionality that exists in the FileMaker platform and lay it out in a plausible, perhaps not perfect, plausible user interface 
whereby, here comes the demo, see if it fits on the screen. When I enter the find mode, it tells me things that I can do. So I'm going to type scripting. And now I can add a, another line, or I can delete it, or I can duplicate this, uh, or I could delete it, or I can add, and then maybe I'm stacking up. These are the things I care. And then I can either perform the find, constrain, or extend. So I'm using these buttons, and I can omit or cancel and so forth and so on. Hey, let's, and just to take the functionality that's available in the platform and kind of showcase it by putting it on the layout, space allowing. And I've had pretty good traction with that where, um, and traction by which I mean, you know, I'll have a client customer. I try to use the word customer instead of the client because client serve environment. Um, the, you know, I have a customer and I say like, hey, I got this feature I think you might like it. So I put it on one layout. And and they say, hey, that's a, you know a plausible layout. And sometimes if they say like, can you put that on multiple layouts? That means they liked it, obviously. Uh, and the script itself is simple. It's you know fine step by step. The button takes a parameter. In this case, it really does take a parameter. Enter find mode. Parameters match the buttons for simplicity. The script is you know basically very relatively simple on the scheme of things. And uh, so that's cool. I'm going to skip this. I don't have this polish. This is multi-select. I, I wouldn't show this code because it's probably horrible, but not completely. This shift select. Anyway, always working on things. Uh, and that, so I'm going to stop here, wait for questions. Um, this happens to be on the same, you know, sample file. Oh, I, I do have one closing thought. I did a presentation for the user group that makes in England. And uh, it's about using the FMP URL to um, pass a found set around. And it wasn't a perfect presentation. But I, you know, it was a little tight on time and um, I was rescued by someone asked a question, but that's out there. I would say, go look at that as well. And uh, with that, thank you once again, hosting uh, questions, brainstorming. Um, hopefully someone's watching this has found a new feature that they want to add to their system. Apple script. I think, I think uh, Tony even said that if you had other ideas that improvements on, on some of these things, go ahead and share those too. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm sure that, uh, but it, you know, it's all workable code, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm using it's, it, it works. Questions. You could probably debate how it works um and some of it's new you know haven't seen it out there in the wild so uh, ashley was asking i um sorting my record id what um did we should do that um, um that you here's the ashley here's the use cases um so the record id because of its special nature um is useful for a number of things, including reverse portal sort. And I would say, go to the website Scale FM, or just use some internet search engine to search for like Scale FM reverse portal sorting. I believe that it is a very so reverse portal sort. So what does that mean? Um, Somebody say, oh, don't search your portals. And that's certainly true if you've got like a million lines portal. Um, but if you've got a portal showing, you know, let's say 25 or less lines or 10 lines or whatever, you might frequently want it to sort such that the more recently created records are on the top, which would require that you sort. I'd advise you sort on the portal, not on the relationship level. Um, so unsorted relationship together with a sorted portal. And uh, why would you sort the portal to most recent records on top? And how would you sort the portal? Um, most of the time, reverse sort by record ID. And you can play around with the C. By default, it'll be unsorted. But if you flip it around, it'll be, we think, the most efficient way to reverse sort a portal. Mm -hmm. Or certainly one of the most revert without doing some other magical tricks, which are In more complicated. Order, then. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's essentially it's reverse creation order since the record have been either created or imported. If you you can take a file with records that were created in a particular order and you can export them and and you know play around with the order and then re-import them. That's the record IDs will be generated at that time, either the first time you create them, but if you export and import, you can have it change, but they will stay the same for the entire session that you have the file hosted. So they're actually very usable for anything that occurs within a given session. And actually truth of the matter for most of the time, unless you're exporting and importing your records every single day for various reasons. Uh, hopefully, Ashley, that was a good answer. But a, a short answer, if you want to, you know, read it. Actually, I, I read the uh, Chris Irvine Scale FM blog post twice. I could say three times, but that would kind of sound bad. But you know, it's worth reading twice. It's it's good stuff. Um, I'm looking at questions here. How did you get the go to option on the script workplace? Uh, that was Scott. If you're still there. Not sure what that means. Yeah, he's there. He's muted though. If you want to unmute by maybe pressing the space bar. Oh, he might be. He might show. He might have stepped away. Yeah. Hey, I'm here. Sorry. When you, when you went into this, your script workspace, I noticed you had a go to option and a. Oh, I see. Okay, monkey bread. I got gotcha. you. Um. Okay. So shout out to monkey bread. Um. We use some monkey bread. And by the way, I do have a valid license. Hi, Christian. <laughs> I absolutely positively have a completely 100% valid. Li actually, I have a five pack. I don't know why it says no license, but, uh, and I actually know Christian and uh, he knows me. In fact, speaking of Christian, I think we're going to have him speak in June. Okay. Yeah. Um, good. Because <laughs> we're going to ask him. <laughs> Okay, I run my license keys twice. Anyway, it's an awesome plugin, and uh, okay, I find I, it kind of odd that they don't allow you to do a find in this window. Do you mean they meaning Claire's file maker? Yes, sorry. <laughs> I mean, um, well, you know, they they not every feature that we'd want exists in the platform. Okay, no, I'm I, I'm just curious because I, you know, my scripts are getting longer and finding stuff is something that I yeah, it's um. Yeah, it's true. Okay. Um, the, the so monkey, uh, whatever Christian's going to do it, but you know, you, you can do all kinds of things and the go to actually, I don't use this much to be honest with you, but since you, but you just saw it. So let's see what happens 22 and then tab. I'm sure it's a great feature uh, and just to, uh, things that I like, it'll tell you if the variable is not declared, it'll allow you to declare them. It does all kinds of cool things, but you know, um, I'll, my presentation on the plugin is it's a really great plugin. We use it, have used it for many, many years, and my license is up to date. Uh, absolutely. And I'm being recorded, so I must be telling the truth. Uh, let me go back to the chat. Uh, generating finds. Uh, let's see, that's Eric, that's you. Uh, do you want to expand on that or did we cover that generating finds? Oh, oh, I, oh I see what you're doing. That's your your timestamp in the topics. So I got it. Okay. Yeah, no, no, I did good. a terrible job doing it. I, I would catch uh, it. I wouldn't sometimes. say you did a terrible job. I said you did a uh, good job, actually. The um, oh, and yeah, oh, you know what? Here's uh, here's a feature that is. I actually, um, what do you call it? I simplified this for the presentation. I'm using symbols and a little popover button. Good for troubleshooting. I just took a client and I moved them. I was able to move them from 14 to, I was able to move their server from 14 to 18. They had a lot of 16 clients. So I, I counted it as progress. And part of doing that, I put these little debuggers because I also um, gave them, took them from like a shared password to individual passwords. So I did that across a multiple file. So this was my trouble. This helped me with troubleshooting because I could see, yep, relax. I could tell that their privilege sets were appropriately set. Anyway, that's symbols. Talked about in the previous presentation, one, yet another terrific feature of the FileMaker platform. And then uh, 
go to the bug FM for this uh, thing about uh, passing a found set around using an FMP or protocol. Um, and apologies for it not being a perfect presentation. Terrific group, by the way. Uh, and this is our who, what, and when bar. And uh, this is um, Kevin Kevin Frank uh, with his blog post. Uh, someone, uh, what's Kevin's blog called? Kevin Frank's blog post, hacking FileMaker, FileMaker hacks, right? FileMaker hacks is what it's called. Anyway, you can lock, uh-oh, I shouldn't have tried to demo that. All right, well, that's a wrap, that's a hint uh, that maybe that's enough. Uh, any other questions? Announcements? Hey, you know what would be great? If we were to have some meeting where we would debate FileMaker features. Well, when, where's that going to happen? I don't know. I think it'd be good if it happened at Dig FM. Yeah, yeah, we're we're working on that. Let's see. Actually, May May twelfth is it? Um. Well, yeah. people, I think people should subscribe both to your Meetup and the community page and your YouTube channel, all three for yeah. sure, to get yeah. the latest announcements and also, yeah, subscribe all over the place. So anyway, that did that make the recorded announcement? I don't. I know you talked about it before. It's still we recording. Record, but... Yeah. No, I'm, well, I'm no, just saying. Not at the beginning, but you mentioned. Uh, yeah, oh, that's why I'm. I'm, right I'm, I'm chilling for you here. Yeah. So yes, uh, FileMaker Feature Fight Club next month, and I think it's May 12th. Well, I posted the link in the chat, um, so the details okay. will be there. Um, if you have any ideas for topics, um, share them there and the answers. And if you uh, if you have somebody you want to debate with, uh, bring them along. And uh, we're looking for some people who want to like brawl. Turn it into a, a nice little brawl there <laughs> for you know, a few of these actually. So anyway, that would be fun. Um, we had one of these last year and it was a hit, so we're doing it again. Uh, yeah. Um, and, and yeah, there's usually a couple, um, people kind of protagonists and then there's active participation encouraged, I think. Right. Like, you know, yes. people are, you know, once the people are, um, paired up, but there's plenty of uh, spectator involvement, you know, shout, people shouting from the uh, from the bleachers and whatnot is uh, encouraged. It's it's kind of like a football game or a, uh, um, you yeah, know, one of those things. Yeah, the nice thing about it is that, yeah, I mean, it's, in many cases, you know, there's really not a good, a, a right answer. The most of the answers are, it depends, but the uh, but we learn a lot of things along the way as people are, are bringing up, you know, where something's useful when it's not, you know, when one thing is better over the other. So it's that really turns out a lot of interesting answers. Yeah, it, it so. totally fills in the understanding of like when you get into like why one feature is potentially better, you know, and it's just a game, you know, but then it's like, but this will, you know, if you if you find this way. Um, by the way, a uh, disclaimer on the find sort, we only do it on the local fields for two reasons. Primary no. reason is if, if it's a related field and that related field isn't there, the go to object fails. So we just, we never, ever, well, I wouldn't say never, we almost never put it on a related field because it's potentially fails. It's, um, it, and it's interesting that it, when last uh, month, Keith brought up that the feature where they do the sort on server. They only do that on local fields too. They don't. They don't bother with yeah, the ones. Yeah, and that's and that's the other reason. When we started to roll this out a while ago, when I got tired, to be honest with you, of doing it the old way, add a button, add to the script, add a button, add to the script, black box layout mode only, much faster development. Um, these boxes, this user interface. Um, is a hint to the user that this will be a fast sort. We still have some sorts where we sort by related fields from the next like, parent table, but those look different. I don't have any here, but they look different. And that's like, we're just calling that a feature. We're not gonna go back and do the others. It's like the green text boxes that look like this are fast. The other ones, yeah, if you really need to click it, go ahead and click it, but it's gonna be slower. Um, but anyway, that's my disclaimer about like, we don't put, you know, don't, don't expect this to sort on a related because you might, the parent might be, um, might not be there. 
Um, anyway, thank you guys once again for um, putting on a show, all the pre and post production. Uh, and thank you, by the way, for comparing me to the Beatles. Just kidding. And uh, uh, shout out to my brother who actually uh, met Paul McCartney in person, where he did some yeah. camera work, where he was in charge of uh, filming Paul McCartney. Um, I personally never met the guy. Harry is a good singer. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Vince. Thank yeah. you, Steve. Thank you, Eric. That's a wrap. Thanks, everyone. Till next time.